You know when you get to your 40s, life changes. The things that used to bother you don't quite bother you anymore. The people you once cared about and their opinions just don't matter. That is where I was mentally when I first had my dog man encounter. I had reset age where I just didn't give a flying flip about what people thought. And frankly, I acted like it. I was making $234,000 a year, living my life and having fun. A sidebar note. Around that same time, the school reunion was rolling around. And you know how it is. That stress of seeing people that you haven't seen in years started to pile up. And it was right then and there in that moment that I realized I had changed. Now, I'm pretty sure you're saying to yourself, what in the hell does your high school reunion have to do with your dog man encounter? Frankly, nothing other than the fact that I was on my way home from my reunion when I saw it. But nonetheless, I'm going to tell you everything. I remember the days leading up to my reunion. My wife was stressing about the outfit she was going to wear. And I just said, screw it. I'm wearing jeans, a button up shirt and a sports coat. We're not going to try and put on airs for people we don't even know. But I need you to understand the old me, the younger man. Oh, I cared what people thought about me. I cared deeply about what people felt. It ruled my life, constantly trying to present the right package to gain acceptance, to feel included. If you're younger than 40, let me explain something to you. Don't do that to yourself. No, sir. Just be you. Be the best version of you that you can be. And if that ain't good enough for people, then screw them. Anyway, my wife and I go to the reunion, walk in the door, and understand I graduated with a class of almost a thousand people. And hell, I didn't recognize anyone in the room. Over the years, I had kept in contact with one or two people. One guy in particular that I really liked, Larry, was always cool. So I'm looking for him. When up walks this guy screaming my name, Jason, Jason, oh, it's so good to see you. And this must be your wife. Wow, what a beautiful woman. Now stop right here and pause for a moment and listen. You know how it is when you meet a salesperson? And they have that freaky, over-the-top salesman voice, way too excitable. Their tone is ear-piercing. And you know, you know without a doubt, they're about to sell you a load of BS. Combine that with the fact that I didn't even recognize this man at all, the situation quickly became uncomfortable. My wife is looking at me, and he is acting like we know each other. So I simply cut him off and say, you got to forgive me, but I don't remember you. And that giant salesman smile on his face drops and turns into a frown and he says brian i'm brian flanagan we played baseball together jason you don't remember me now my mind is racing images are flashing into my mind and nope i got nothing now listen i really really wanted to pretend like i knew this man but i decided that was a bad idea so i didn't i said nope brian i'm sorry i've got nothing i don't remember you well, that led to him going to get three other people who all tried to make me remember them. This went on for the first hour and a half of the reunion. People trying to make me remember them. Before finally I bumped into my old friend Larry. And then that's when a good time started. Larry's wife and my wife hit it off. Now we're all dancing, enjoying ourselves. The night rolls on and we catch up with a few more friends. And overall, that reunion was a success in my mind. I had fun. My wife had fun. And most importantly, I was myself, not some fake wannabe a-hole pretending to be someone that I'm not. But well, we get in the car and start to head home. And it's a two hour ride from my house to the school. And for the first hour, I'm still chatting on the phone with Larry. My wife is sleeping and snoring in the passenger seat as I drive. As it's now 1130, 1135 and her bedtime is 845. Guys, you know how it is. Our wives love to go to bed early. Well, I get off the phone with Larry because he's made it home and I'm driving down the road when I see what looks like a giant bear laid out in the road with his butt facing me. So I turn on the high beams and start to slow down. And frankly, all I see is a hairy ass in the road. So I come to a complete stop about 35 yards away, high beams on. And that's when I get a real good glimpse at it. It's something down on all fours. Its butt is in the air and you can see its head moving back and forth. Now, I need you to understand something about where I live. We don't have any bears in this area. But from behind, this thing looked like a gigantic. In my mind, I'm saying to myself, why is there a bear in the middle of the road making love to the concrete? Because that's exactly what it looked like. Well, I guess this thing finally realized after about a minute 
that my headlights were shining on it because in one motion it leaps straight up into the air, spins around like a freaking Autobot, twisting its body and landing on two legs. And this ain't no bear. It's brown like a bear. It's got mangy, tangled fur like a bear. But it has a short snout, two pointy ears, and one that looked like a portion of it had been sliced off or bitten off. And I imagine seeing this right there in that moment where it's looking at me, I'm looking at it, where my wife decides she's going to wake up and she's got a little bit of an attitude, saying, babe, how far are we from home? Why are we stopped in the middle of the road? And the entire time she's talking, she's looking at me. But then she turns and looks out the front windshield and loses her stuff. Starts to scream, hops in the back seat. Now she's hitting me in the back of the head, telling me to drive, drive, drive. Now listen to me when I say this to you. Up to that point, I wasn't exactly calm, but I wasn't caught up in irrational fear. I was just kind of shocked at what I was seeing. But as she started to scream and lose her stuff, I start to panic. Now I'm reaching down to put the car in reverse, and when I look up, it's gone. Now, I'm not sitting here telling you that was like missing time or anything. But I'm going to tell you what I exactly remember seeing. Because I took it all in. I soaked it all in. Then I asked my wife if she saw the same thing. Before I looked down to put that vehicle in reverse, it was there, standing in the middle of the road. You can see blood on the concrete behind it and what looked like a deer caucus in the middle of the road. Now, when I look back up, and I only look down for a split second, not only is it gone, but whatever it was eating is gone, and there's just blood in the middle of the road. Now, I've been thinking about this over the years. And I come to the conclusion that there's only three options as to what could have happened. Number one, either these things move as fast as people say they do. Number two, it put me and my wife in some kind of trance. Or, 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 our minds just broke. I mean, just completely broke. And we could no longer see or comprehend what was going on. But what I do know to be true is that when we looked at that roadway, it was gone, the deer carcass was gone, and the only thing left there was fragments of blood, flesh, and bone right there on the road. Everything else was gone. Recently, I heard you talking about the effects of giving too much attention to the topic of dog man and what the ultimate outcome would be and could be. And I realized that I'm one of those people you're speaking about. I was first introduced to the subject by listening to Dog Man Encounters with Vic Cundiff, and I quickly graduated from that to listening to everything about these creatures and found myself obsessed with the topic, spending hours on Facebook in groups, constantly checking notifications from the over 20 Facebook groups I was following. And I'll never forget, it got to the point to where my husband insisted that I take a break from it all. You see, I found myself in an online feud over Dogman. And I'll never forget the look in his eyes when he read the messages on my cell phone, people calling me a slut and a whore. And the look of disappointment on his face when he checked his notifications and people were attacking him and he had absolutely no interest in this topic whatsoever. So I stopped listening to, watching, and participating in anything that had to do with Dogman. Let me tell you, it was hard to leave it all alone. I left every group I was involved in, banned all the people from contacting me, and tried my best to move on. Then one night, I'm home alone, and I need to say something to you. And for the record, I never had a Dogman encounter in my life. Also, I live right next to Logwood Country Club in Houston, Texas. Like I said... I'm home alone in the kitchen washing dishes and look out of the window and see what looks like a dog man walking around to the back side of my shed in my own backyard. Now, I'm standing there saying to myself, okay, you done lost your mind. There's no way possible that there's a dog man in the middle of Houston. So I close the blinds, finish my dishes and go to bed early. I'm laying there in the bed watching TV on my tablet when I hear this tapping on my bedroom window. 
And then this feeling combined with this thought comes and says, you bet not, you bet not, don't you dare, don't you dare go over there and open them blinds and look out that window. But I was curious. So I got up, opened the blinds, and there it was. A little bitty cute baby dog man is the only way to describe it. It was extremely cute. But when I looked back off in the distance next to the shed, what I saw left me completely and utterly terrified. Understand, I've opened the blinds, pulled them up. This little bitty one is right there up against the window. The big one is further back towards the shed. I'm saying to myself, okay, you must have fell asleep. You're dreaming. So I close the blinds and sit there trying to figure out what the hell is going on with me. Then my husband comes home from bowling, finds me sitting on the bed, staring off into space, and asks me what's wrong. So I tell him exactly what I saw. And he says, baby, you need help. You really need really need some help but i insist that he go outside to the backyard and takes a look that's when he tells me hell no he refuses to participate in my grand delusion there is no way there's a werewolf here in houston in our backyard and you're not going to convince me of any of that foolishness and listen to me i'll tell you it was right there in that moment that it was like this rage and anger came over him i never seen him that mad in our entire relationship he goes into the kitchen, gets a garbage bag, goes throughout the entire house, and grabs everything that I own that had to do with Dogman. Takes my statues, takes my toys, takes my drawings, takes my paintings, takes everything that pertains to Dogman, throws it in his trash bag, throws it all into our fire pit, takes lighter fluid, and pause right here. Let me explain something to you. Now listen to me, right here in this moment is when the both of us realize that there may have been just a little bit more to what we thought was going on. And my husband even acknowledged it after this because he pours that lighter fluid on all of that stuff, strikes a match, throws it on top, the flames pop up into the air and we hear this growl, this audible growl that is so loud, so strong that I felt it inside of my lungs and inside of my intestines. He even heard and felt the same thing. That's when the fire turned green. It was almost as if something was right there in front of us that we could not see that was growling at us. Now, I want to be clear with you. I had not been listening to any dog man content whatsoever. I've been trying my best to stay away from it until I heard you on the Bump of the Night podcast. And then all of this came flooding back to me like the pieces of the puzzle made sense. So I wanted to share this with you. However, I'm done with Dogman and anything to do with him. But I think everybody else should know that there's a hell of a lot more that's going on with these creatures than anybody's telling you. Dog man in the trees. Listen, my house in Suffolk, Virginia was a little bitty slice of heaven for me and my family. And I mean it, it was a slice of heaven before this happened. Understand, it's not every day that you find a property that butts up against the great dismal swamps. To me, it was like having a massive, mysterious backyard. And I've lived in this house for five years. It's perfect for me and my family. It's the place where I've been raising my son. Imagine the scene. One evening, my son and I are in the backyard and we're throwing a baseball back and forth. His plan was a trial for second baseman on the baseball team. So now picture the scene. Imagine standing at the back door to my house. Up in front of you is a wooden fence. To your right is a wooden fence. To the left is a wooden fence. Over the left side of the yard is my barbecue grill, my patio table, and my umbrella. 
I'm standing with my back to the fence, catching the ball as my son stands closer to the house and is throwing it to me. We're throwing the ball back and forth. I'm talking to him and I'm like, look, kid, don't be nervous about going to trial for the baseball team. You're going to make the team. You got a good arm. You know how to catch. Now, I can't guarantee you that you're going to start, but I can guarantee you that you're going to make the team and you're probably going to play a few games. And I'm telling him, but if you keep working at your skills, you're going to be one hell of a baseball player. You got to understand, my son is a good kid. He really is. But he doesn't have all the confidence that he should have. And I don't know if that's my fault or if that's just how he is. I always talk to him. I spend a lot of time with him. I think sometimes kids go through those phases where they're less confident than other times. And I wanted him to have a level of success so it would build his confidence. Frankly, I just wanted him to make the team because there's a lot of kids that try out for these baseball teams. Nonetheless, we're back there throwing the ball back and forth when he screams, turns, and runs into the house. I'm talking about screaming like a little girl, throws his glove up in the air, and while that glove is still flipping in the air, he's going into the back door. So I'm standing there thinking to myself, what the hell did I say to this kid to get this type of reaction from him? So now I'm jogging from the back of the yard into the house, and when I get inside, he's literally hiding under the kitchen table. And I said, buddy, what's going on, man? What's wrong? What happened? He's shaking and trembling. I said, talk to me. Talk to me. Come from under the table. And he will not come from under the table. So now I'm down on the floor, getting under the table with him, hugging him. And I said, hey, wait, man, what happened? What's going on? I'm really thinking that my son has had some kind of mental or emotional breakdown that I can't figure out what would be causing this. That's when he says there was something in the trees. And I'm like, something in the trees? Son, what the hell are you talking about? He says, Dad, there was a wolf in the tree behind you. Now pause right here and let me say this. Understand, the Great Dismal Swamps is a spooky ooky place. There are times when I'm in the backyard grilling and I hear sounds back up in there that will make your heart sink. But listen, man, this is broad daylight. You don't hear sounds in broad daylight. That's normally at dusk when the sun is going down. This was broad daylight, and I'm really trying to figure out why my son is losing his shit. So I tell him, don't worry about it. I'll go outside and take a look. So I walk out of the front door, go around the fence, and walk up to the woods on the back side of the fence. I'm looking around, and at first, I don't see anything. Nothing whatsoever. I go a little bit deeper into the woods. And that's when I start to see blood all over the ground. I'm talking about like a pool of blood, like somebody jigged the pig under the armpit and bled him out right there on the ground. So now I'm saying to myself, whoa, hold on, something really is going on out here. Looking up in the trees though, I don't see anything. So now I circle back, come into the house and I'm like, hold on son, explain to me exactly what it is you said that you saw. That's when he breaks it all down for me. And when I came to the realization that what my son was telling was the truth, it was utterly freaking terrified because according to him we were throwing the ball back and forth he had just thrown me the ball and i was in the middle of talking to him he says dad then you were just talking and you had your hand held up in the air with the ball in it he says so i'm looking at the ball thinking you're gonna throw the ball he said then i see the trees behind you start to move and this thing parts the tree branches spreading them open and pokes his head out from amongst the branches and it has a dog in its mouth, and it's chewing on a dog. Now pause right here for a moment, and let me speak to you if you are a parent of a child. I don't know how many of you found yourself in a situation like this. Did I see blood? Yes. Did I know where the blood came from? No. But this shit my son was telling me was so wild, I found it very, very, very hard to believe. But nonetheless, his reaction, the way he was behaving, was real. So I went based on his reaction, not what he was saying. I wasn't convinced that what he was saying was true. In fact, I thought the kid may have been having a heat stroke or he was hallucinating because none of it made sense. But to see my son under that table, trembling in fear, something scared him. So I get him to come from under the table, turn on the TV, have him lay his head on my lap, and we sit there until he falls asleep. When he goes to sleep, I leave out of the house, go up the street to my neighbor's house. I just want to know if anybody's seen anything weird. So I knock on the door. My neighbor's name is Zachary, we call him Z. I'm like, Z, have you heard or seen anything weird back off in the woods behind the houses? That's when he goes on to tell me that his two German shepherds went missing earlier that morning. He heard them barking and growling at 5 a.m. 
At 6 a.m., he heard one of them hollering like it was in pain, and when he went outside, they were gone. So I tell Z what I saw in the woods behind my house, and the two of us go back into the woods to investigate. We go to the spot where the blood was, and then we follow a blood trail and find one of his dogs with his leg ripped off. And so now we're standing there looking at this, trying to figure out what's in the Great Dismal Swamp that would do that to a German Shepherd. 